four ways Cadena is taking blockchain mainstream. Cadena founder Stuart Popejoy recently joined OK for a Twitter space chat in which he discussed numerous topics, including Cadena's big plans to appeal to the masses. Number one, Cadena Eco. Earlier this year, Cadena launched Cadena Eco, an intuitive design to supercharge blockchain's biggest thinkers, top tier talent, and unparalleled strategic capital to fuel the hyper growth of Cadena's ecosystem with the technology and strategic help they need. Simplifying crypto in what we are targeting at Cadena and Cadena Eco will help us realize the important goals, said Stuart Popejoy, who joined OKCoin OK on Twitter space recently to celebrate the listing of Cadena's native token, KDA. Cadena Eco will be core to the Cadena ecosystem, said Stuart Popejoy. Its primary purpose will be to allocate funds to builders from DeFi to NFTs, gaming, and beyond. Some projects Cadena Eco has already funded include Marmalade, which can guarantee the uniqueness of NFTs by allocating developers and users to store more data on-chain than Ethereum, which forces developers to store information off-chain. There he's talking about when the Cadena NFTs are minted, you will actually be able to store things on-chain because Cadena does a lot with on-chain technology, where Ethereum has to reference Filecoin or IPFS or AR Weaver to grab data. So Ethereum NFTs are referencing a third party which you then technically have to trust the third party where Cadena will be able to mint that information and put it directly on chain. So there won't be that need for that third party. Number two would be PACT. Cadena has created a native smart contract programming language, more intuitive and more powerful than Ethereum Solidity. While creating our smart contract language PACT, we studied not only Solidity and Ethereum's virtual machine, but also Bitcoin script, noted Popejoy. Something that Bitcoin script reached for, but quite and did achieve is a language that is powerful enough and fundamentally safe and protects you and dApp developers from bugs that really should never have been allowed there in the first place. While Satoshi fell short, we believe that we have achieved this goal. And all they're saying there is not that Bitcoin did anything bad or wrong or Ethereum even, but what will be needed to meet the, the demand of global railroad adoption in order to deliver security and products on that next level, you would have to spend, you know, a year and a half or I think they actually spent three to four years building a coding language that allows you to build and scale a blockchain that could meet the demands of global real world adoption. So on Save by Cadena, developers can explore historical crypto hacks and see how if the dApp had been coded in PACT, the bug would not have been possible to write in the code. PACT is fundamentally safe and protects you and dApp developers from certain bugs found in other blockchains, said Stuart. If we swing over to SaveByCadena.com, this is where you can see their website. Compound hacked was 147 million, V Finance 34 million. All of these hacks would not have been possible because of the coding language. And again, if you haven't had the opportunity to swing over and check out Typing Kate, she is a coding prodigy. She's, I believe, 20 or 21 now. She started coding or messing around with Bitcoin coding when she was eight or 10. And she documented her journey about just, hey, I'm gonna teach myself how to code in this coding language called Pact. And she's done it phenomenal. She now works for CADEX and she's a college student gonna probably build some of the most interesting and revolutionary technology in the industry. She's a little mini Vitalik, Vitalik Buterin in the making. She's still like, she's prodigy smart. And that's what would be needed. You really need a coding language that prevents people from getting wrecked. It really, that's the only purpose of it. You need a safe, secure coding language. And that's why I say almost all finance will be moving to Cadena because of Stuart Popejoy. He built JP Morgan Chase's first blockchain. So when it comes to making finance applications that people want to make, do you want some engineer like Daniel Siesta and Frog Nation building you something that turns into a Ponzi scheme and wrecks people? Or do you want somebody that worked for the biggest legacy banks in the world and built their technology? And I tell people, people that call it Cadena banking coin. I say, I used to be a controls engineer and do work for Ford Motor Company. So if Ryan Meta creates a blockchain, does that mean Ford is any way associated with it? No, I would assume JP Morgan Chase would want to be associated with Cadena, but probably on their private blockchain side. Number three, Cadena is a layer one with the power of layer two. So during the Twitter space, Popejoy noted how layer two technology introduces complexity. Lightning Network on Bitcoin is a good example of some complexity that results when you start putting other systems on top of layer one blockchains. It just changes the trust model and the threat model. So Bitcoin's awesome, but the Lightning Network, which is centralized and implements another potential layer of failure, not necessarily the greatest. It would be awesome if Bitcoin did what the Lightning Network does without the Lightning Network. One of the things we're shooting for to make Cadena's layer one as usable as possible for the average dApp developer and crypto user one more important way to help users is to ensure low fees. 
Layer two solutions don't guarantee low fees. Stacks doesn't help Bitcoin with its fees, said Stuart Popejoy. There's no solution to high fees on Ethereum presently. Our system has low fees because it's scalable. Gas can return to its true function in a system like Ethereum, which is to make people play fairly with each other in terms of how much they use the resources of the system and not to enrich miners or validators. And what he's saying there is basically layer two applications might make a layer one better, but at the current point in time, they don't reduce the gas fees on the current network. You're trying to solve a problem that shouldn't have been a problem. Uh, layer twos that scale layer ones are doing so because the layer one wasn't properly designed and the architecture didn't have the needs to meet the demand of global real world adoption. Taking a look at a blockchain like Cardano, what Cardano needs right now is a lifeline, a a, a raft, a lifeguard. I mean, call in, uh, what's his name from Baywatch? Gosh, I wish I was funnier. Um, somebody call, who's that dude from Sharknado? Come on, give me it. Who's that guy from Sharknado? Anyways. Cardano needs that uh, that dude from Baywatch and Sharknado to come over here and throw him a lifeline because when the network gets busy, gas prices are not supposed to go up. Gas prices are going up because you have a ton of people trying to use your network. And if altcoin trader A and altcoin trader B both place transactions and the network's super backed up, but I need to get my transaction done right now because I need to close out a trade or I need to send tokens or I need to move assets, I'm gonna pay a little bit more. So what you have is a bunch of people all trying to use the same blockchain and we're all competing against each other because we all want to send a transaction but in order to do so and get it executed in a timely manner i need to pay more so then all trader a pays more than trader b pays more than trader c pays more and the network gets so busy you have so many people trying to use it all it does is drive up gas prices because the underlying technology is just not there ace k thank you homie I appreciate that big time, my man. Thank you guys big time for all the donations and support you show this channel. I can't thank you enough. So number four, proof of work is scalable. Proof of stake is not. And this is just not up for debate any longer. If you think that proof of stake is scalable in a decentralized manner, the only thing, the only reason that you think that is because you're not educated about what's actually happening in the space and you're drinking some Kool-Aid. Popejoy told the OK team that there is a major misconception in the blockchain industry. Many believe proof of stake is scalable while proof of work is not. Proof of work functionality can be distributed over numerous chains without sacrificing security. Proof of stake on the other hand always requires a validator set which, if split up between multiple chains, loses security. And what he means there is the blockchain trilemma is the holy trinity in the crypto space. Before Kadena, everybody was attempting to solve this blockchain trilemma. How can we increase speed, stay decentralized, and maintain security. Because if a blockchain wasn't secure in the first place, no one would ever use it. So they're always gonna be secure, but normally to increase speed or be more decentralized, you end up sacrificing security or speed. You can't do both. You can't do all three. Um, nobody's been able to figure it out because it's a mathematical anomaly. And Kadena team actually found that out. So if we talk about all single chain layer one proof of work blockchains all have the same performance limitations, right? The speed of light, the network bandwidth, and transactions and execution times. So if you take a look at a proof of work layer one blockchain like Ethereum, and you figure on average, uh, one layer one proof of work blockchain can accomplish five TPS. And that's just a general number. Some can do 10, some can do 15. Ethereum, last time I Google searched it, was doing 1.2 TPS, Bitcoin's 4.97. So if you say you just have one blockchain, and then we did something like went up to two blockchains, you would assume that if you had two blockchains, uh, you could do 10 TPS and three blockchains, 15 TPS, five blockchains, 25 TPS, 10 blockchains, 50 TPS, et cetera, et cetera. But that is a you know very naive approach and it has two challenges, right? If I start separating my blockchains and say I have 10 different chains, that would give us 10 different currencies or we would start reducing the security risk. So if you take a look at, if I were to separate and run 10 chains side by side, each one of those chains would have its own currency. So if I set a blockchain because they're not storing the hash from the previous block, it would be the same, like literally like forking a chain, right? You're gonna have, you're gonna end up with 10 different currencies. If you do something like sharding, what's gonna happen? If I shard those chains, the security level just got split by however many times I sharded. So if my shards, if this shard isn't storing the hash from this shard in it, then you're splitting the network security every time you shard. 
Now there's ways around that, but what sharding is, is a mathematical engineering nightmare. It's never worked. And every time you start sharding, the more you shard, the harder it is for validators to process transactions. So what you end up with is a blockchain that's sharded and each shard, like Avalanche calls them subnets. Now I'm not 100% on the whole Avalanche thing, but I'm pretty sure that Avalanche knew if they called their sh subnets shards, that everybody would have laughed at it. But if they call it shards and they manipulate retail investors into believing that a subnet is not a shard, they can get a lot more people to invest in their ecosystem. If Avalanche said, hey, in order to scale, we need to shard, everybody would be like, oh, we're out. You know, but if they change it to subnets, it makes people think that they're shard, that they're not shards when I think they really are. But what Cadena's done differently is Cadena's created what is called a multi-core blockchain. So originally Cadena started with 10 chains and it would have looked something like this with my Mac 10 and it went something like this, cruising down the street. No? All right, I'll quit rapping. But Cadena built a multi-core blockchain, right? So Cadena has 10 blockchains that are all connected together. If they would have connected their chains like this, which is similar to something like AVAX with their three chains, right? And what a hash is, a hash is a mathematical problem. You don't know what went in it. You only know what the answer was, right? So what a blockchain does is they're taking all of the transactions that take place on their chain and they're turning them to a complex mathematical problem and they're storing that back in the block. And that block is all the transactions. You don't know what went in it or how or where, but that's basically the easiest way to explain it. So if you connected say 10 blockchains together and you started to store the hash of each chain. So for example, if these shards if they were storing the hash of every shard in the main block and you were always able to reference that shard, uh, it would be a different story. But it's what ends up happening is as these other sharded chains scale, the size requirements to store all of that data in one block. So if I wanted to connect 10 chains together, I could, but I would have to store the block, the hash from every single chain in that block, in every block. So the size requirements of a blockchain would be so big and you know you could do it with 10 i mean even 10 chains would be hard but i think you could do it with like five chains all connected together and store the hash of every block but you're still going to hit a point where five chains just isn't enough and then if you if you say you had to store on 10 and you went up to 20 chains you'd literally be storing the hash of 20 different blockchains and then eventually you wouldn't have any room for transactions left in your block because the size would be so big so what cadena did is they they first launched with 10 blockchains and if you see like if i wanted to go from um, chain one to chain set my bad if i wanted to go from chain one to chain two to chain three to chain four right if i wanted to make it from here to here i can't go directly across right i have to go into this chain come out of this chain and come in on this chain so cadena built what are called gas stations and it looks like this so cadena went from 10 chains to 20 chains and when they were at 10 chains guess what they were doing and what cadena's done right this is what their blockchain looked like when they had 10 chains so again if you wanted to go from point A to point B, guess what you'd have to do? You'd have to go into this chain. How am I saying that? So one, two, and then if you wanted to get to this chain, you're three hops away from the farthest chain. Some chains are only two hops away, but sometimes you're three hops away. So this would give us, if I wanted to go to, yeah, you're only two hops here. When they went up from 10 chains to 20 chains, this is what it looks like. So now I can go from, again, from, say we started on this was our home chain, and I wanted to go to any other chain, I could go one, two, three, I'm at it, right? Or I could go one, two, three, and I'm at it. You are only one, two, three. You're only three chains away from whatever chain you want to be on. So what Cadena did was they built gas stations. So when you say you want to go from chain one to chain 20, and chain 20 is three hops away, uh, you just hit the send button. You don't see what's going on in the background, but what the Cadena blockchain does is it sends your tokens to one chain, it burns them, it recreates them on the next chain, and then you're good, or it then sends them to the next chain and it burns them and then recreates them. So it it's super, super cool how they did this and how they proved that they can scale is A, they started with 10 blockchains and went up to 20 just to show the world that, hey, it can be done. But this is the mathematical problem because you're talking about when they go to 50 chains, right? How does it work? When they go to, you know, 100 chains, how does it work, right? And they use what's called the graph theory degree diameter problem. This is a mathematical problem that people have been basically working on. I think if you search like the, the traveling salesman theory, it's kind of like that, right? Uh, if you're delivering for UPS and you have to take 50, you have to make 50 deliveries, what is the absolute fastest way to do, go to all 50 deliveries? Uh, there's so many mathematical things in there that you can't solve that problem. But in theory, you can take something like a graph and say, okay, if Cadena has three chains and they're three hops away, they can get up to 20 chains, right? 
And then if they are four hops and four hashes, they can get up to 100 chains. And then when they go up to five hashes and five hops, they can go up to 624 chains, right? So when Kadena goes from, I don't know, 50 to 100 chains, the size of the data getting stored in their blockchain is not going to increase. So Kadena has figured out a way to scale exponentially the layer one, and that's what's gonna build the layer two. So every proof of stake, JS, thank you so much. Every proof of stake system that is trying to scale has had some hard limit that they are going to hit eventually. When you take Kadena's design approach to distributed over numerous chains, proof of work proves more scalable than proof of stake. Fact is that proof of work based layer one technology can handle industrial use cases along the lines of clearing the entire US stock market onto Kadena. We can do that today, said Stuart Popejoy. That's the scale we are talking about. And what he means there is right now, if you go back and you watch some of FTX interviews with Sigmund Freed on Kitco News, to uh, the, the last segment of our interview perfectly, which is applications for cryptos and DeFi outside of just investing. So we've talked about traditional finance. Uh, before we get into that, actually, what do you think of the latest uh, upgrade for, for Bitcoin Taproot? So I can't find it, and I don't want to sit here and wait, let the stream die while I'm trying to find it. But Sam Bankman, in one of these interviews with Kitco News, uh, he's asked, what do you think about blockchains that are currently in this industry? And I assume that he didn't even bring up Kadena or wasn't on his list of applications because he states that not one blockchain in this industry could even support just the transactions that the FTX blockchain does today. Or it would literally, blow, I think he said it would blow out the blockchain or explode the blockchain or fork it or frag it or destroy it because no blockchain can actually scale just to meet the demands of what FTX exchange is doing. And then you hear Stuart Popejoy say that we could onboard the entire US stock exchange. I assume that there's a lot more trades taking place on the US stock exchange than there is on FTX, but I could be wrong on that. So when we talk about understanding the underlying technology of what blockchain was created for, and you start comparing them against each other, there is not one blockchain in the industry that comes even close to competing against Kadena as far as tech. Is the Kadena team gonna be able to get people to incentivize to build on top of their blockchain? Are they gonna be able to? I would think so. If they don't, something's seriously wrong with this industry. And that's all I got on Kadena, guys.